When I was younger, I didn't have much guidance when it came to learning how to play basketball. My dad always told me I was born with handles, but thinking back, he was the reason why I got them. Him giving me a ball to dribble in the house was the key, but there was still a lot that I didn't get until I got older and learned for myself that I always wanted to teach the young guys. And now I finally get a chance to teach it to the kids that I train. Step one is quickness. Although many will disagree, I wholeheartedly believe the handle starts with quickness and then how fast you are. Think about football players. You run with the ball. You don't have to dribble it. So you get to see how faking defenders out works before you add a basketball. And so without throwing big words at you, I just think of it as stop and go. You can't just work out on the quick part. You have to work on the breaks too. And most of the great ball handlers that you could think of, they've got good breaks. So simple stuff on the sand to get their bodies used to these movements. If we can get this done, we take care of the hardest part. Step two, control. This is the easy part in my opinion. Teaching the kid to dribble a basketball isn't hard. It's the movement that's more of a challenge. Here's the tools that I'm using to help them get right. A regular basketball, a heavy ball, and a silent ball. Think about this. How many different ways can you dribble a ball? An in and out, a crossover, between the legs dribble, behind the back? Then you have slight variations of all of them, right? It almost doesn't matter what drills you do. As long as you dribble that ball, you'll get control fast. The regular ball is self-explanatory. The heavy ball is to build up the quickness and control at the same time because you're building the muscles with it. And the silent ball is to keep you dribbling even when you're at home. They all weigh differently, but equally as effective because you're getting used to finding the ball and putting it back to the floor. I'm proof that this works. I've even seen rumors though that Kyrie dribbles with a tennis ball. Okay, step three. It's using your body to protect the ball. Most of the time, you don't need to do much to protect the ball or to get by your defender. The best ball handlers you know are great at using their arms, shoulders, and hips to lose a defense. If you know what you're watching, you see it all the time. So the earlier you learn this, the more it'll stick. Step four, reaction. Using drills with the silent ball to help players react faster. My guess is, if I can get the brain to think quickly, the body will follow. By the way, if you're looking to cop the heavy or silent ball, the link is in the description. But reaction may be my favorite part because after a while, you don't have to think about anything. Your body just begins to move in ways that almost surprise you. Okay, so then there's step five. I guess I should admit, this is my favorite part. It's just the who. It's the ultimate way of teaching reacting. I think like anything, when you're training for the real thing, you have to come as close to it as possible. Experience is the best teacher. Which always makes social media so funny because People always try to teach what they've never done before, whether it's fighting or how to get rich, how to shoot. In order to really get it, you have to experience it. But hey, let's just keep a log. Let's see over time how all this translates for these younger players. I should thank all of you though because we got the license to create Boruto and Naruto gear. And it's only possible because so many people supported the silent ball. So thank you. And again, if you're looking to dribble in the house without waking anybody up, get your handles right, cop the silent ball. I believe this is the difference between dribbling like a robot and having the fluidity of Kyrie.